<laughs> um, they run into Willem, Willem Black, mm-hmm. staring at the, a picture. Well, it starts because they're seeing a stage building up. So they're like, what the fuck is this about? Whatever. And then, of course, T.S. has the logical thing. Why don't you just ask a worker? No, no, no. I'm going to look at this fucking weird dude with mustard on his shirt. He'll know. And they do. They go to Willem. He's trying to stare at the picture. Those those 3D images that were really huge for like a year. And then I never saw one again. Didn't they have promotional material? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Mallrats. Uh, everything Mallrats related had a one of those 3D eye pictures that apparently, and I say apparently because I, like Willem, could never see these fucking things. Apparently, if you look at it, it's got the word Mallrats in it. Mm. Um, ironically, that picture that uh, Willem's staring at does not have a sailboat on it. It was just geometric shapes. Oh, well. Yeah. The whole thing is about a goddamn sailboat, and it's not there. So it's just like, oh, look, a sailboat. You see it, too? <laughs> Damn it. I've been staring at this thing for a week now, from opening to closing, and I can't see a goddamn thing. So he literally says, I brought a lunch and a soda. I a sandwich and, and, I'm and a gonna, soda. <laughs> and I'm going to fucking see this goddamn sailboat everyone keeps talking about. And then, and then he says the line that I think is fucking hilarious, where he's just like, uh, okay, um... What do you think this stage business is all stage. about? It's not a stage. I'm going to see this thing if I go blind trying. No, the stage over there. And it's like, yeah, basically we find out that it's uh, Brandy's father's game show is going to be That's This is where there. the game yeah. show is happening. So uh, that's when they freak the fuck out about it. And, you know, and then, of course, T.S. is spending the whole time going, oh, for fuck's sakes, yeah. you know, my girlfriend's going to be auctioned off on this show because the winner goes on vacation. Not if we ruin it. Not if we... If not if we... <laughs> Not if we trash the thing. Um, that, that, so you want me to win my win my girlfriend's father's good graces by destroying her show? You're clever. No, no, we can have someone do it for us, and we'll never be held the wiser. Enter Jay yeah. and who Silly is this? Dog. Hatchet men. Hatchet, Hatchet men. men. And then it's bang, bang, bang. They're knocking a assholes knocking on the door of the fucking kitties. And but he likes the kitties. Like kitty, 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 yeah. kitty, kitty, kitty. Well, we'll get to that because he's mean as shit to the cats. But then he's like, he needs to say goodbye to them. I don't understand. Mm. So then Brody shows up and talks to Jay. And, of course, this is the first time we see a significant amount of adjusting to dialogue. Because all he says is basically, uh, he says to T.S., like, isn't it the mad fat chick killer? When I think what his original line is like, isn't isn't the assassin who wants to kill the governor or something yeah. like that? Um, and then basically he asks Jay and Silent Bob, like, hey, you know, we got to... Um, we need help. We need help from you. And then, of course, Jay can, begins to deliver probably my favorite line in the whole fucking movie that nobody even catches because everyone's paying attention to what's going on. Because Silent Bob is ever trying to levitate, Jedi mind trick. levitate a fucking cigarette because he watched Empire and Jedi and thought he could do it. Um, but what he says is like, oh yeah, we need help. And he goes, what is it with everyone today? Like, we're helping Trisha because she wants to talk to Obi-Wan here about our video setup. And they were like, well, why him? Silent Bob's an electrical genius. He won the science fair in the 8th grade by turning his mom's vibrator into a CD player using chicken wire and shit. <laughs> that is the funniest fucking line in the movie, and no one hears it because it's happened. That line is going on while we're hearing the music get intense as, as Silent Bob's trying to hit the fucking cigarette. Knock it off! Yeah. But, like, that line... I never... I, like, I swear to God, I watched this movie a, thou- a hundred times before I ever even heard that line. And then once I heard it, it was the greatest line I'd ever heard in my life. Well, they so. want... They're going to destroy the stage. Well, we're going to do we're that anyways. anyway. Why? What else are we going to do? <laughs> Good point, considering what happens the next day. Got to contend with the Force. Who's the mm-hmm. Force? This guy doesn't know who the Force the is. Force is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I never thought... Yeah, okay, it's like basically the Force is the most feared security guard in the business, man. 450 collars, all convicted. I hear he's even got two kills. He's in Running Man, right? He is, yeah. yeah that's the guy at the end, right? Yeah. LaForce is in Running yeah, Man. Yeah, LaForce is in Running Man. Um, I don't know. So, basically, yeah. So there's a security guard that's going to basically fuck with their day. But then Silent Bob has figured out that if you pull out a specific pin in the stage, because it's apparently it's the Death Star, if you pull out a specific pin, the whole stage will just collapse. Again, much like the Death Star, this is not how you build shit. No. But Don't have happens. a glaring mm-hmm. kill switch. Uh, Willem with the kids. Mm-hmm. Kids are like, oh, look, it's a sail- It's a schooner. You <laughs> dumb bastard. <laughs> you dumb bastard. <laughs> it's not a schooner. It's a sailboat. A schooner is a sailboat. You know what? There is no Easter Bunny over there. That's just a guy in a suit. 
Because they make the joke that the Easter Bunny's in the mall and he's yeah. been there, what, two days after Christmas. Yeah, he's been there <laughs> since two days after Christmas. Because um, that's where the Easter Bunny stand is. I guess that's like a fucking joke on, mm-hmm. like, we, mm-hmm. we tackle holidays well before they happen. It's true. It's true. I Welcome to fucking malls. Um, I have my tree up already. Fight me. <laughs> um, I don't have a tree, so I can't say shit. Uh, we get the, we get the, I guess, infamous Superman sex conversation. Yeah, uh, the sex that is basically from an essay by a man named Larry Niven, who wrote it, basically, it's called Man of Steel, Woman of Kleenex. Um, and it's basically, the whole conversation is just, you know, it can't happen, Wonder Woman, or sorry, Lois and Superman cannot have a baby. Spoiler alert, they do now. Um, I don't know how it worked, but they kind of skipped over that in the comics, but they do have a kid now. And it's basically Lois could never ha- never carry Superman's baby because if Lois gets a tan, the kid could kick right through her stomach. Mm. The you know the only only someone like Wonder Woman has a strong enough uterus to carry his child. Do you think her you know fallo- fallopian tubes could handle the sperm? I guarantee he blows a load like a shotgun right through her back. <laughs> the only way he could bang regular chicks is with a kryptonite condom. Of course, that, that would kill, would kill him. him. <laughs> By the way, the reason I have a lot of these in my head is because of that soundtrack, those things, like I think I mentioned before, the the little word bubble, Clips. that was one of them. Yeah. I've listened to that album a, a lot, so those word fucking things are in my head. Like, I'll be dying, and I'll be, I'll be able to do that speech. Um, they also have a conversation about whether the cookie stand is in the food court. Yes, which actually originally went on longer, which was even more funny. It's um, a good conversation to have because, you know, it shouldn't be count because he's like, well, T.S. is like, well, it's food. So it's in yeah, the food court. Like, food no, no, court. no, 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 no. no. <laughs> uh, eatery, <laughs> eatery, uh, cookie stands in eatery and eatery part of the food court. Bullshit. Eateries that operate within <laughs> said designated square count as food court. Anything outside of the said designated square is considered an autonomous unit for mid-mall snacking. The funny part that they made him take out, which I don't like, is the next scene that was supposed to happen was another guy was coming in. And asked him um, where the food court is. Because, and then he goes, oh, there it is. There's the cookie stand. And then T.S. repeats everything that Brody just fucking said to him. The whole joke was supposed to be that he convinced T.S. And that T.S. was convincing this dude. Because well, it's true because forward. there is, is such a thing as mid-mall snack. Yes. C- certain malls, if they're big enough, need places like that. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, Brody sees Renee in a clothing store. Sure, say left them. And I guess this is the argument that you can make if you're fucking Shannon Doherty of mm-hmm. like how I switch because every other scene this woman's in a clothing store, so yeah. you can make an argument that she like buys an outfit, wears the new outfit. Of course, where's the old outfit going? But I then guess keep... that tiny little backpack she has. I guess. I don't know. Um, they fight. Well, this is where she says. Well, he's uh, like another great line where she was just like where he was just like I think you know. I get it, you know, you want to, you know, you were PMSing or something, yeah. which is, that's always going to go well for you. And then she says, and that's great lines about, like, you know, you know that, um, remember that time at prom, when, at hotel prom night, you told me to sleep under your, under the bed in case your mom burst in? Which makes me go, wow, they were dating for five years, because they're in college, mm-hmm. I would assume roughly 22, and prom would have been when they were 18, so, you know. Four or five years, easy. Yep. And then a strip tease to the theme from Mighty Mouse. The fuck is wrong with Brody? And then uh, when they went to the her grandmother's funeral and he told most of her, her relatives that he could see her nipples through her burial dress. But then she's not going to suffer any more of his shit anymore. So you're done? Yes. Fuck off. I love how he's just like visitation rights to the mall. He's like, mm-hmm. you're a fucking idiot. Yeah. I'm done with you. Goodbye. Yeah. Uh, we get volume one of Jane Bob's plan. Mm-hmm. It's going to hit LaFour's with a sack of quarters. I'm not going to do it. I think no, I've done please enough. please don't. We I've will be enough. here literally I've all day if you but do. But yes, <laughs> I can say that one and the second one that we opened the show with. Because um, again, on the soundtrack. They're looking over the blueprints. The kid goes up to them. Mm-hmm. Bob gives him one of those hands up like, I'm going to smith you, kid. Mm-hmm. Then when he's running at LaFour's with said quarters... The kid rolls the truck he had on him. Mm-hmm. Bob steps, steps on, on it, it. does so a little flying. fucking Bugs Basically, Bunny deal. Just hands the quarters to LaFour's. So LaFour's got some more money. Goes flying through the 
one of the underwear. clothing stores. I love the underwear flying <laughs> cartoonishly in the air. Yeah. And he goes, boom, crashing in on Gwen mm-hmm. for the first time. Yes. Are you fucker. Bang. Hits By the way, head. that image where he's like basically on his knees through the face the popular of, a, girl. of a popular girl. That woman was Jason Lee's wife at the time. Oh, Carmen yeah? Llewellyn Lee, yes. <laughs> there you go. Mm-hmm. Uh, we get a kid on the escalator and Brody's just like, I hope his pants get caught and a bloodbath ensues. Not a year goes by. Not a doesn't... year. <laughs> I remember because like a few years ago, a kid mm-hmm. did get stuck in the elevator, <laughs> escalator. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, like you go right back to the moment. It's going, that kid is back, back on, on the... the escalator again. Um, They find Trish. Trish the Trish dish. Trish the dish. Nobody calls her that. <laughs> <laughs> a 15-year-old girl writing a sex book. Of mm-hmm. which she's right. She has sex with men. What was it? Age? Eighteen. Eighteen. No, no, sorry. Fourteen to thirty. Yeah. And um, she got a twenty thousand dollar grant based on the sample chapter. Yeah. Um. I. This is all kinds of illegal. So yeah. No, this wouldn't happen. But oddly enough, the code that she had in a in a uh, diary mm-hmm. that code she was talking about, where it's like you know. The the smiley face is when I go down on the guy. The smiley face with the lashes when the guy goes down on me. The circles when I have an orgasm. Whatever. Kevin had a girl, a friend who was a girl who did that. Hmm. And I don't know why anyone would do that. Who knows? Mm. Uh, so she needs. She's subjects. waiting for. Well, she's waiting. She's, she's waiting for Silent Bob. And she says that last night's subject was the guy from Fashionable, Fashionable Man. Male, which was uh, the, you slept with that asshole. The Ben Affleck character. Yeah. Uh... Running into the comic store now. Mm-hmm. What is all this? There's like big line. Well, it, started, well it starts out with her saying, "Hey, good luck at the comic yeah. book store." Because like, what also, does that well, mean? <laughs> there were two things that happened in the Trish scene that we just forgot. Um, so she tells Brody, like you know, Renee is like you know, because he's just like, "Hey, if you need a 22 year old, I'm you know, I'm young, I'm virile, I'm sensitive to a woman's needs." So she goes, "I somehow I doubt that Sega boy," and he says, "God, Renee's got a big mouth," but then. He also says that uh, she also turns to T.S. and says, I heard you were going to propose to Brandy on a theme park. When are you going to learn? And he's just like, wait, how the fuck does she know about it? And when they're walking to the comic book store, he's just like, Brody, what the fuck? Why, you know, why does anyone know about this? That doesn't make any logical sense, because it doesn't. Because why the hell... He They mentioned a third guy saying, oh, he's telling, people, Hartle, yeah, but telling people about it. Who did? Why would he tell Sean Hartle before he tells Brody? I don't know. Seems weird. Um, comic book store. Mm-hmm. There's One a big side, line. Red. You gotta ask me nicely. Tell him, Steve Dave. <laughs> which is a big point, because that's the name of their podcast. Cause... But what was the point of tell him, Steve... Because that guy's name is Steve Dave. His name is Steve Dave. Yeah, and this is Walt the Fanboy and Walt Steve Dave. Fanboy. Um, Fuck the you, name, Fanboy. <laughs> the name Steve Dave actually came from... This is actually kind of a funny story where basically when they were younger and him and Walt used to go to comic book shops and Brian would go just because. There was a guy that ran the shop that eventually became Jay and Silent Bob's Secret Stash and they didn't know his name. They know it had a V in it. So they didn't know whether it was Steve or Dave. So, come see so they would literally call it like... They would just be like, Hey, bye, Steve Dave. And hoping one day he would correct them, but he never did. So they were just like, okay, to us, he's Steve Dave. And tell him so, Steve Dave became the podcast. So they get into a fight. Mm-hmm. Um, and then all you hear is, ah, help, there's a kid trapped <laughs> in the escalator. And Brody doesn't have the reaction you would hope. Well, he's preoccupied with Steve Dave yeah. and Walt the fanboy. Because he says one of one of the lines that I use in my enti- my daily life of why. Cause just because you think a guy reads comics, he can't start some shit? I'll <laughs> fucking take all you on. So... T.S. grabs somebody. I think it's Dave Klein, right? Yeah, it's their director their, of photography. Their DP. DP Dave. Um, so, oh, don't hit me. Well, what's going on? Stanley Stan signed comic. comics. And then Brody, mm-hmm. correctively, yeah. says, how did I not... It's true. He, yeah. Clearly, Brody... Brody's Should life, have known. Brody's life is surrounded by this fucking mall. He loves this mall so much. He should know that Stan Lee is signing comics well, in his... Well, that's the it thing. Like mall. he literally says that sentence. He's like, "How did, how did Stan Lee coming to my mall? Like, how did I not know about this? Like, I must be slipping in my old age." Which is yeah. another line I use on a daily basis. Um, version two for Jay and Bob. Mm-hmm. This is Batman style, Operation Dark Knight. Yep. Where he's gonna, Bob's gonna fly in over the fours, mm-hmm. hold the pin, and bickety bam, the fucking stage goes down. Stage goes down. Stage trash. We go smoke a bowl. You he's, got it. He, get your fat ass up there. Don't forget your helmet. <laughs> So he's got his Batman helmet, goggles, mm-hmm. his coat, 
that flings, flings out to a, a fucking to a bat. Kid, bat cape. And basically, you could almost see, like, go well, out, so Kevin wrote this in so he could be Batman, I see. Yeah. He flies over LaFour's, mm-hmm. misses the... Misses the pin. Misses the, and crashes into another thing. Yeah. This time, he's naked. Gwen's, Gwen's got...